Good morning, everybody. Uh, first, I would, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this presentation. I'm, I'm not really from the solid state community, more from, from chemistry, so it's a, uh, a nice opportunity to be able to, to present you some of my work. And uh, so we are, you have been speaking a lot about accuracy and uh, precision, and uh, I'll bring a new kid on the block, which is uncertainty. Why, why do I, I work with uncertainty? Because I, I am interested by the principle of a virtual measurement uh, approach, where a co uh, the result of a code should be as any result in measurement. It should, be, uh, it should, it should come with an uncertainty which uh, qualifies uh, the quality of your, of your prediction. Okay? So, uh, doing this, we, we, we can use all the tools from the developed by metrology to, to work with uncertainties. And I will just define uncertainty here. Uncertainty is a, a non-negative parameter characterizing dispersion of the quantity values being attributed to a measure run, which is the thing we are predicting, based on the information used. So if we want to, do, to estimate this, to, so to characterize the dispersion of the possible values, um, the, the reference guide, which is the GUM, the guide on uh, uncertainty management. Uh, it is assumed that the results of a me measurement have been corrected for all recognized significant systematic effects, and that every effort has been made uh, to identify such effects. So, what do I mean? How to, to correct systematic errors? So, we have seen in the earlier talks that there are physics-based uh, corrections based on workflows or in uh, quantum chemistry, these are composite methods with, where you combine different uh, uh, methods for f uh, of different levels of accuracy and you extrapolate and so on. They do generally do not need reference data sets, but you can also make statistical corrections by very simple methods, as I sh will show next or based on machine learning. It's much, much more easier to publish now. And uh, you can also calibrate your, your DFTs to, to get uh, some, uh, some level of, uh, of correction. So, for first example, uh, the error distribution for band gaps by LDA. So, usually people look at the histogram of errors. On this graph, I showed you uh, the calculated value, and as a function of the calculated value, the error. Okay, so I need a data set, and I, I compare the calculated value to the reference data in the data set, and I plot the errors. And you see that generally, you will see that the errors uh, plotted in this way show uh, trends. And if there is any trend, you cannot estimate uh, an uncertainty. This is senseless. Uh, as we have seen from the, the, the documents. So you have to correct this trend. So the, in this case, this is, a, this is a very simple linear correction. Okay, so if I do this linear correction, I get corrected errors which uh, are centered on zero and have a nice uh, Gaussian distribution around zero. So now I can estimate an uncertainty of the corrected values. And uh, this would be more or less the RMS, uh, the, the standard deviation of this, uh, of this set. But do not estimate an uncertainty from this. This, this has no meaning. And one point to have in mind is once you, you made this correction, the residual errors you have here are still model errors. They are not errors in this case due to the experimental measurements. The experimental error bars are here, are plotted here, but they are, they are smaller than the dots. Okay, so this is still model errors. So this is still systematic errors, but this is a systematic error with a random-like distribution, and we can try to, to estimate it and uh, use it as an uncertainty. <coughs> so this is a standard uh, calibration I show here the residuals from a calibration by a, a linear model. Uh, in the standard case, you would have this kind of uh, graph where you have the points, their error bars, and you see that you, can, you have two kinds of prediction bands, one which is a confidence prediction bands which re results from the uncertainty from the parameters of the, of the, of the linear model. 
and then you can make predictions of new values by adding the uncertainty on, by uh, combining with the variance on the, uh, a given measurement. The problem with that is that if you, if you have a very small error bars on the points, uh, the confidence uh, interval goes to zero. For instance, I take the same data but with smaller uncertainty as we had on the previous plot. And you see that if you use a standard calibration model, you cannot predict anything. Your confidence uh, bands are here. And then you, you get with what we call an inadequate model. That is, your model doesn't go through all the error bars of uh, your predictions. How do you correct that? You have to change your model, your statistical model. And here we add simply uh, a stochastic term, which is a random term with a, a center on zero with a standard deviation. And then you have to estimate this model, which is very simple. And when you make predictions, you have a new term in the uh, confidence, confidence, confidence bands, uh, which is the variance of this term. And so you, that the way you can estimate properly the uh, prediction uncertainty of your model. The problem with that is that uh, this, this uncertainty is not transferable to other uh, properties. Okay? It has the same dimension than your, the properties you are calibrating on. So you, you should have one uncertainty per property. So I have shown you a, a very a positive case where uh, you, have, uh, you had a data set that could be corrected to have a, a, nice, a nice distribution. They are more complex, for instance, for instance if you look at the atomization energy for this, uh, this uh, calculation, you have this error distribution uh, which is a complex one. You see that you have uh, very many outliers here. And in this case, a simple linear correction will not bring you uh, really a good improvement. You will still have a very strange distribution. And in that case, you have two choices. One would be to split the data set in uh, many small parts and uh, estimate an uncertainty for each of, the, of these uh, classes. And that becomes really a nightmare because uh, you would have, when you make a new, a new compound, uh, in which class is it, and then I, 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 you would have a, a certain precision uncertainty, uh, uncertainty and so on, prediction uncertainty. Uh, so the best way to do that, we found to do that, is to use uh, actually um, uh, the cumulative density, cumulative density function uh, of the absolute errors. That would give you a curve like that from which you can draw a probabilistic inference. For instance, uh, what is the probability to get, to get an absolute error be below some threshold? So for instance here, if I, if I aim to get a 10 kcal per mole uh, accuracy, then I know that I would have uh, only 70% chance to get it with this kind of calculation. Okay, so I have 30% chance to get larger uh, larger errors. Uh, also, I, I show you here that uh, the mean uncertain, the mean absolute error, uh, is not really useful to make a probabilistic statement, because uh, if your distribution is not normal, you cannot, uh, you don't know how to infer any probability from the, the mean absolute error. Is, it is not a good, uh, a good description of the, of the distribution, unless uh, your distribution is normal Gaussian. For instance, here the mean absolute error gives you a 60% uh, chance to, <coughs> to get, uh, to get uh, your accuracy below it and 40% uh, chance to, be, to, to get it uh, above it. But that, does it, that changes with the, the functionals and so on. Another interesting uh, parameter is the Q. Uh, for instance, we propose to use a Q95. Uh, so if you look here, you have a 95% probability and that gives you a value, um, and you know that you, you, you only have five, if you make 20, cal 20 calculations, you will have only one chance to be above this value, okay? Statistically, if your sample is, uh, is really representative. So the, the, in that case, uh, that gives you a kind of, uh, it's less sensitive to outlier than uh, the max error, and uh, it's, uh, it's a nice way to, to proceed. And you can compare, you, you can make rankings on the, 
on, <coughs> on uh, functionals from that uh, by you looking at their, uh, their ECDFs and their Q95. And there are some inversions. You have DFTs, you have uh, functionals where the uh, mean absolute error is uh, smaller uh, within a pair, but where the Q95 is, uh, is a reverse. So some, some uh, like here, so, uh, this can be truly be really, uh, functional as a small uh, a mean absolute error, but it has a large uh, Q95 compared, for instance, to B97.1, <laughs> which has a larger uh, mean absolute error, but a smaller Q95. So here you have a smaller chance to get large errors. So that's nice to know. And. Uh, so I will refer to the same, the same paper that we heard uh, earlier about the scan method. And I compared here the, the <coughs> cumulative density function uh, for, for the, the scan and the PBE to check if uh, it, it's really true that scan is better than PBE. And uh, yes, apparently, when you look at the uh, density uh, cumulative density function, there is no problem. Uh, in the two sets, no, uh, no transition metals or with transition metals, you see that P the, the CDFs of the scan is really much better than PB. But if you do a simple linear correction of PB, as we shown earlier, you get identical results. Okay, so my point here is uh, if you are uh, eco uh, responsible before launching uh, heavy calculations, maybe a simple statistical correction can get you a long way uh, to a, a good accuracy and a small uncertainty. So I will uh, simply conclude on that. And uh, repeat, I have two minutes to, to repeat you the main message. So the main message is the uncertainty is uh, the, the good tool to uh, have probabilistic predictions uh, or probabilistic information on your predictions. Uh, to do that, you have to correct the errors from the main trends that you can correct. Okay, you cannot correct everything, but you have at least to get to a distribution of error which looks uh, nice and proper. If you cannot do that, you, can, you have other statistical tools like the uh, cumulative uh, density function of the absolute errors and which enables you to get a lot of information. And uh, I thank you for your attention.